how are you doing? I'm so happy to be back with you for another episode. So this is Christelle. Uh, this is Inspirations, a podcast about knitting and yarn dyeing, and it's um, season six, episode 11. So thank you so much for joining me. If you're new around here, there is a new podcast every Monday at five uh, that goes hand in hand with a newsletter that's uh, sent out every Monday at five as well. That's Paris time. And the shop is usually updated every Monday afternoon. Uh, but I must say that this trimester, this three months, next three months period is going to be a bit out of the ordinary. Uh, for two main reasons. The first one is I have a lot of fiber festivals, so I won't be updating the shop as uh, as often as I use I'm used to. <clears throat> and second, in June I'm moving houses, so uh, this is taking a toll on my dying schedule, which is completely normal and uh, expected. Um, but yeah, this is going to have uh, an an impact on uh, the. Um, shop update schedule for the next three months uh, but yeah otherwise this is the way it works and um, if you are a returning viewer thank you so much I hope you're doing well uh, thank you very much for sharing with me in the comments it's uh, really appreciated um, it's been very funny because I had a very technical question about uh, the latest colorway that I showed uh, last week which is fleur de cactus um, and I was like, uh, no, <laughs> nope, sorry, I don't do that this way. Let me, let me bring it up. It was, no, I don't need to bring it up. It's just, there was a very technical question about the way I approaching the color and, uh, I didn't even know what the acronym meant, meant actually. Um, um. And what kind of you know uh, dye I was using, and I was like, okay, no clue. Um, I just get the colors from my supplier, and because before I was an indie dyer, and before I was a knitter, uh, and before I had kids. Okay, that's the very important point. Before I had kids, uh, I loved to paint. That was my hobby. I was completely passionate about it. I painted flowers. Uh, maybe I can show you um, just right up here, just behind me. That flower is mine. Okay, that's an example. I I loved painting flowers, watercolor. This was not watercolor. This was acrylic, but uh, I I loved to uh, you know take pictures of flowers and uh, paint flowers i had a lot of books about that a lot of different colors a lot of different paint brushes a lot of different watercolor paper uh, i was really into that and then i had my daughter sorry and watercolor painting and a baby to me was not compatible because what I like to do, I, I, I didn't have a lot of space at the time. I still don't have a lot of space, but I didn't have a studio, for example. I didn't have a room with all my supplies. So I had to, I, when I wanted to paint, I had to set up everything. And watercolor painting, you have to be present in the moment because you're working in the... Um, I'm, I hope I'm not saying anything ridiculous in English, but uh, uh, you have to to, uh, to work in the wet, okay? You have to put water on your paper and then you add the color and you really have to, uh, you, you cannot stop in the middle and do something else because otherwise the, the, the paint is going to, to, to dry and it might have an effect on the paint that you, you were not planning on. And uh, so you really have to be present until the end of the process and the end of the, of the section of painting you wanted to do. You cannot stop in the middle. And anything you cannot stop in the middle to me is not compatible with having a baby, okay? You must be able to like drop it <laughs> the, at, at any time, just drop it and run, okay? <laughs> That's what motherhood is about. You just have to be able to drop everything in a blink of an eye and just run to grab your baby what, what, for whatever reason. Or even if it's not, if it's only a brisk walk, just to get her from her crib or 
not for not an, an emergency i mean but that's that's the idea and i really tried it it was really frustrating i didn't have any long stretch of time available to me anymore so for a couple of years i was without a hobby and when i yeah a couple of years and when i had my second kid i met uh, a very good friend of mine christine uh, who was a knitter and that was in 2010 and uh, really not long after that uh, my grandmother who was a knitter and crocheter and uh, made a lot of things out of her hand uh, went to a retirement retirement home in france and uh, my sisters and my uh, family we had to empty her home uh, because she was renting and we had to uh, let the flat go and there was a whole lot of supplies uh, knitting supplies uh, uh, needles uh, yarn uh, patterns uh, books uh, everything crochet everything a lot a, a lot of buttons a lot of of notions everywhere and uh, she had so much she had so much and um, I've always known her knitting me uh, sweaters and uh, and cardigans and uh, things I still have today and that some of my kids and uh, nieces and nephews uh, wore actually so that's very that's so cute um, and I don't know at that time between uh, not having a hobby anymore meeting Christine and getting all the supplies I could ever have needed to start there was a click and I started knitting and from the yeah and that that was the start but just to a very long way of explaining that before I went into dyeing yarn and knitting I was completely passionate about painting and that's my way of approaching dyeing I don't really do anything quite technical there is a bit of technicalities covered like pH or you know things without if you really don't have them covered you just can't, can't do the, the job so those I'm I'm covering them no problem but anything that goes uh, farther than that I don't know I just I just have this idea in my mind of the colorway I want to dye and then I paint it really I paint it using all the colors I have like a, a palette um, like I, I did when I had my colors in watercolor and that's it um, I guess that as as long as you put color on the yarn and uh, it doesn't get off and uh, it's pretty it's okay <laughs> okay guys um, was nice reminiscing about that so maybe I'll get back to painting uh, what I don't have little kids anymore um, my my youngest is four soon to be five I could take it up again but really I don't have time <laughs> maybe when I retire from dying yarn um, or maybe not I don't know maybe it was just something I, I enjoyed doing earlier in my life and, and now I'm enjoying doing any knitting more actually that's what I'd like to do more I'd like to be able to knit more have more time just to knit anyway don't we all wish that I think we do all wish that um, even the non knitters they just don't know it yet that's all okay uh, so fanfare des fous that's my um, it used to be monthly now it's only once every three months, but still the same amount of yarn to win and still the same uh, functioning. It's just that because I never th thought about, you know, um, announcing the winner each month and it was like a three months cycle. I didn't even make it on purpose, but um, I decided to make it on purpose then and to uh, do it uh, every three months. That's much simpler so I've uh, randomly uh, picked the winners and uh, so for January we have Sophie W on Ravelry she knitted a beautiful uh, sweater called Eternel Suzanne 
uh, with the colorway that I dyed, especially for Porto, uh, the, the um, 2020 um, one uh, digital edition, I think it was by the river. Um, the inspiration was the Dura River. And uh, so Sophie W used that colorway to knit Eternal Season. It's a beautiful sweater. And she wins uh, the January colorway, cocooning um, of the Sock Knitters Almanac. So each, each uh, winner will win a uh, colorway of the Sock Knitters Almanac. Um, then February, it's Delphine Benetro. And she used Druides, uh, which is February 2022 of the Sock Knitters Almanac, to knit some color palette socks. Uh, beautiful. And then there is S point C point Rose 86. And she knitted a Sorbito shawl uh, with Season of the Witch. So congratulations, girls. Uh, please get in touch so that I can ship your uh, prizes to you. Um, so uh, SC Rose 86, you, she wins a skin of uh, the March colorway of the Sock Knitters Almanac of this year. It's Ostara. Uh, Ostara is this colorway. Um, so congrats, thank you very much for playing around. Along, uh, don't hesitate to play along guys. If you have, you can play using uh, my yarns, you can play using my designs. Uh, you can enter uh, any time uh, between, so that started for the second, second trimester, uh, between April 1st and June 30th. Um, and there is, uh, there will be three winners and each one will win one of the colorways from the three months. Okay, and I will uh, announce the winners, I think, closest to second half of, of July, because uh, this trimester is going to be super busy. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, that's it. And uh, oh, yeah. Just if you want to play, you can play on Ravelry. There is a thread dedicated to the fanfare des FO. So you can just post a picture uh, of your project and then you are, um, you can enter the uh, giveaway. The random picking and um, also on Instagram with this hashtag okay and if you are looking for a bit of inspirations I mean the thread the, the discussion thread on Ravelry is absolutely gorgeous so just you know if you will you're, you're looking for a bit of inspiration it's gorgeous um, and that's it for this uh, part. There is no shop update today because um, I spoke about it a bit uh, more at, le at length in the uh, French version of the podcast, but uh, I had a very difficult week with uh, like a huge amount of orders to ship uh, during this week. Uh, well, the week that I've just came by, passed by, um, with six kilos and me completely, completely exhausted because n w uh, I, I've been, I, I was wondering why actually, but then I thought about it for a minute and I had been working for two weekends in a row, three weeks in a row without a rest. So yeah, no wonder I was tired. Um, so the week was incredibly difficult. I didn't, you know, I think I'm going to, uh, really rest the coming weeks. I'm going to finish preparing the next fiber show, which is on 15th and 16th of um, April in Rittershofen. Uh, it's really, really close to Germany, guys. I don't know if there is some of you watching the podcast in Germany, but if you are really close to the French border, like northeast of the French border, uh, I think it's like maybe 40 minutes for, from Karlsruhe, for example. Uh, and I know that uh, the little house I'm going to rent out for the time of the festival, a tiny, a typical uh, Alsatian um, tiny house. It's going to be so much fun. And I'm like, uh, I, I don't know, I'm like 10 minutes from the, the German border. So I, I might just, you know, uh, because I, I spent a few months uh, in Germany when I was a student to, for my last year of, uh, of studies, because I studied both English and German. 
my German is, has, has become very poor because I didn't have any occasion to practice it. But uh, I mean, if I, I was in a condition to speak German again, I think it would come back very, very quickly. I, I was actually, when I finished my studies, I was uh, um, as good in German as in English which to me seems completely, I don't know how I was able to do that, but I was able to do that. I, I, must, I think I should be able to do that again, given the right conditions, right? Um, and when I was in Germany, I had this favorite brands of, you know, uh, morning cereals and uh, things like that, that I didn't find it back in France. So I might just hop there <laughs> after the festival, just to grab some and then drive back home. Okay, so yeah, might do that. Um, it's going to be so much fun and if you are coming, uh, so it's uh, the place is Rittershofen, I think, yeah, uh, from the German border, very not far, maybe 30 minutes and uh, even less maybe. And uh, so if you're coming, just let me know, okay, just come and say hi. Um, okay guys, and the last thing I wanted to share with you is, uh, last week, we were cut short. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that. I had battery problems. I only have two batteries for my uh, my dear, and um, I usually uh, I'm very very um, uh, how can I say. I pay very close attention to have both batteries fully charged when I start recording the podcast because if I go over thirty minutes. On the French version, I know that I'm going to be running out of time for the English version. So I usually have the full battery, the two batteries fully charged before I start. And I don't know what happened this time around. Maybe a ghost, because you know, this is one of my secret <laughs> hobbies. I love to watch uh, ghost videos on YouTube. Okay, I'm a big paranormal uh, junkie. And um, that's one of the things ghosts do. They uh, completely empty batteries. Okay, so either a ghost or I forgot. I, I, I'm thinking more, I, I'm leaning toward the ghost. Okay, um, so do you have any batteries? <laughs> Recharging batteries like takes like four hours. Uh, <laughs> and that was there was the uh, birthday party for Constance, so I didn't have any time left to record it. Okay, <laughs> so be it for this time around. So I didn't have time to share with you guys a very big, big, uh, some very big news actually. I've decided to write a book because I'm not, I'm not busy enough as it as yet. So yeah, it's going to be called the Sock Knitters of Anak. Okay, they're going to be twelve um, sock designs. And that's the broad idea, okay? And this baby <clears throat> that I've showed you last week, shown you last week, uh, is going to be part of the, of the book for February. And you might wonder, why is it in two parts? Well, it's because once I completed the sock completely, I was finished and put it on, this was you know the the heel started directly here and it wasn't it, it was too shallow actually the heel was too shallow and so i had two options either i unwebbed and and um and i don't know guys uh removed the woven head ends of the sock and frogged it until i reached here which was completely depressing or I'm going full Indiana Jones on this and I'm just cutting everything and then grafting like my life depends on it. I decided to go with this option because I like adventures, I like risk, I like excitement. So I never want to be bored in my life. So I decided to do this. Okay, so uh, this is the easy part. I put everything back on the needle and I decided to go with a slightly different heel because I wanted to have something fully reversible. And so I opted for um, a garter stitch short row heel. And I'm approaching <coughs> the part where I'm going to graft it back together. There is some certain Frankenstein vibes here, no? <laughs> so if it doesn't work out, it's okay. I would just have to re the feet and that's perfectly fine with me. Mm. 
but I'm going to have this working out. I mean, I'm, I, I, I like, I know how to graft a toe, so I, I can definitely graft something bigger than a toe. That's my reasoning. We'll see, okay? Should be done by the end of the... Of the when we'll see each other again, should be done, okay? I might give some updates on my Instagram because I really want to, you know, more spontaneously share on my Instagram more things. Then I've made some progress on this on Monday morning. What I wasn't willing, I, I want, did want to work on Monday morning, so I took up my knitting and watched a movie instead. And I was like the rest of the week, and I ended the week with 14 hour days. <laughs> Not a good idea, okay? Procrastinating again. Bullet journaling is still working very strong, but I mean, procrastinating is so deeply ingrained, it's difficult to fight it all, all the time. And so I'm done with the first color. I need to switch to the green, which is not uh, uh, caked up yet. So major block here. And the last project on which I'm working is Satisfaction. And I sent it to my testers. So this is the uh, third version of Satisfaction, third or second. Actually, there was a second version, but that didn't go past the first uh, flower motif. I think it, it's now in second position, okay? And I'm using Ostara. Uh, that's my match color way of the Sucknes Zomelak. So that's all the three projects on which I'm working right now. Uh, pretty much enjoying every one of them. And Satisfaction is I told you guys the idea was to have it out for testing for the 7th of April. I did it. I sent it out to testers at 11 p.m. on Friday. <laughs> because I finished my day at 10 p.m. on Friday. It was like I still have that to do. What do I do? Do I cry? Do I procrastinate again? Uh, and I was like, it's enough. Okay. This thing is going to be close to a year in the making okay i don't know when i started knitting this i don't know when exactly i cannot pinpoint the exact date when i said it would become a pattern but it's closing on in a year okay so it's starting to be ridiculous so i decided that even if everything is not as i wish it would be I, I wasn't done exactly on everything on the pattern it doesn't have picture it doesn't have gauge <laughs> It doesn't have a lot of things, it doesn't have a border, it doesn't have written instructions. It it has a grid, it has charts, it has a ca cast on instructions, it has uh, needle sizes, um, it has a title, it has a name, and it has a file to take it to it. But I mean, it was far from being complete and for, far from being as well fine tuned as I wanted. But I was like, okay, if I'm not doing that now, I'm going to, I'm, I'm never going to do it. So let's make progress. I said to the testers, I'm very sorry. Uh, it's the only way that I can meet the deadline that I put to my, I, I, I gave to you and I, I gave to myself. Uh, I'm choosing to uh, be there on the deadline that I said, uh, you know, be true to my word, to myself and to you. Um, and if it's not perfect, and we're, it's a work in progress, we're going to work on it together. And at the end, it's going to be uh, very cool, and, uh, and everything will be uh, that will be a happy ending, <laughs> okay? Uh, in a completely um, good way. I mean, anyway, anyway, um, that's it. I feel a bit scattered in this podcast episode. I'm sorry about that. I think that is that's all for this week that I wanted to share with you. Uh, maybe just a glimpse at my bullet journal because it's very, very beautiful this week. I needed to have peps and color, so this is what it looks like. It's gorgeous. And um, I'm really enjoying doing this. I've, when I watch this, I feel like I have time, if that makes sense. Anyway, guys. Have a lovely fortnight. I will not be seeing you next Monday because I will be returning from uh, Alsace and maybe Germany. 
And so um, in the meantime, take care, happy knitting, and we'll see each other in the next podcast that's in a fortnight. Bye.